Welcome everyone to our Sporlin Experts webinar on innovations around the BQ valve system. This system enables field technicians to be able to construct the appropriate TEV for each job. As we go through the presentation, the chat function will be disabled, so communication will be through the Q&A screen only. We encourage you to submit your questions there and we'll address them during the designated Q&A segments. Before we dive in, I'd like to introduce our presenters. Bradley Hannigan holds a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Missouri at Rolla. He is currently our senior product manager over thermostatic expansion valves, distributors, and flow controls, and our complex value-added assemblies. His co-presenter today is Stephen Coaster. Steve holds a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Columbia. He is currently the applications engineering lead specializing in refrigeration systems. Additionally, all attendees to today's presentation will receive a follow-up email after the webinar containing the resources and materials that we are presenting today. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar brought to you by Parker Sporlin. Today, we'll be talking about the BQ valve series, and we'll be highlighting the features and benefits of utilizing this valve type out in the field whether that is on a residential air conditioning system or inside a grocery store or restaurant working on a refrigerating unit, the BQ valve can service a wide variety of applications. As John mentioned, my name is Brad Hannigan. I'm a senior product manager here at Sporlin. I've been with Sporlin for a little over 18 years now. I spent a majority of my career in manufacturing engineering and then moved on to product management and have held this role for the past three years. Joining me today is Steve Coaster, an applications engineer here at Sporlin. Hello and welcome, Steve. Hey, Brad. Um, as Brad said, my name is Steve. I'm an application engineer at Sporlin. I've been at Sporlin for a little over 13 years now. I started in applications engineering, spent some time in design engineering, and have moved back into the application engineering role. Um, also with us today is John Hoffman, our communications director. You heard him at the beginning of the show doing the introduction. He is here making sure this webinar runs as smooth as possible. Thanks, John. All right, so before we get started into the BQ valve topic, let's first understand what the BQ valve is, where it's located in the system, and what its function is. Here we have the basic vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle. It has four primary components, the compressor taking low pressure superheated gas and compressing it into high pressure, high temperature gas, the condenser, which condenses the high pressure gas into a high pressure liquid, the metering device depicted here as the, uh, the thermostatic expansion valve, this is where the high temperature, high pressure gas flashes into a very cool, low pressure liquid gas mixture. And then you have the evaporator, where fans are being used to blow air across the coil to cool down, cool down the space that's being conditioned. Almost everything that cools, um, refrigerators, air conditioners, walk-in coolers, et cetera, all those things uh, uh, have this, these four basic components. The BQ valve shown uh, as the thermostat expansion valve is in the schematic. A lot of folks in the industry refer to uh, mechanical expansion devices as TXVs, Steve. You've heard that before? I've right? heard that before, Brad. Yes, but here at Sporlin, we like to call them TEVs because expansion starts with an E and not an X. I always so, call it with an X. With an X? Well, yeah. that's the difference, Steve. So if you hear us say TEV, this is what we're talking about. So as we just stated, the TEV takes hot liquid coming out of the condenser, and the liquid will flash cold liquid vapor mixture uh, that goes into the evaporator coil. The TEV's function is to modulate more open and more closed to maintain superheat at the bulb location. There is the bulb right on the exit of the evaporator. This is the only function of the TEV. It controls superheat at the sensing bulb location, Steve. It doesn't control pressure. It doesn't control evaporator temperature. It doesn't do anything else besides control steam superheat at the bulb location. Sounds good. So now that we understand what the TEV does, we need to understand what is superheat. Steve, what is superheat? Well, Brad, simply put, superheat is the temperature of a fluid above its saturation temperature. Okay, that sounds great, Steve. What the heck does that mean? Can you explain that further? Sure. As heat is applied to a saturated vapor, the liquid changes, begins to change over to a vapor um, and a con at a constant temperature and pressure. As more heat is continually absorbed by this saturated vapor, the liquid further evaporates, eventually leaving only a vapor, but the vapor will in keep increasing in temperature as it continues to absorb heat. This is superheat. The TEV responds to superheat via the sensing bulb, as shown in the diagram. <clears throat> um, so we have three forces acting on the uh, expansion valve here. Number one opening force is your 
sensing bulb responding to the suction temperature, the superheat. And uh, it is as the superheat rises, the sensing bulb will will uh, pressure will increase opening the valve. Number two, you have your equalizer pressure on the outlet of the evaporator. That is a closing force counteracting the uh, the diaphragm on your element. And then number three is your spring pressure, which is adjusted by your um, superheat adjustment on the bottom of your expansion valve. OK, so the equalizer of the spring are closing forces and the bulb pressure is the opening force. That is correct. Perfect. OK, so now that we have basics out of the way, let's get into the topic on uh, at hand. TV has been around for like 90 plus years. I think uh, the first original TV that's more than me was like 1934. So 90 years, uh, Steve, uh, that's getting strangely close to 100. Uh, and the BQ valves have been around for 35, 40 years, somewhere in that time frame. So why are we focusing on BQ valves here today? Well, Brad, as the EPA continues to restrict the types of system refrigerants that we can use on, on new equipment, um, the number of refrigerant options continues to increase at, for the OEMs to use at their disposal. Um, 30 years ago, most uh, manufacturers were just dealing with a handful of refrigerants like R12 and R22, yeah. um, but the EPA has basically outlawed and, and banned those refrigerants. Um, today, we have dozens of viable replacements for those refrigerants being used and several new refrigerants and blends have entered the market in the, just the last few years and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. Aftermarket business okay. needs a good way to combat the array of configurations of expansion valves that are, that are needed to support this equipment and the, one of the best ways to do that is a custom, customizable product like the BQ valve. Excellent. Uh, but uh, looking at that table there, Steve, what about, uh, what about A2L and propane applications? Great question, Brad. You must have noticed the A2L refrigerants and propane in the table. We're going to highlight those here. Um, the uh, Sporlin BQ series of valves has all the UL compliance for these refrigerants. So it's a great product for older refrigerants as well as some of the newer ones coming on the market. Great. Thanks, Steve. So what are the features that make the BQ valve ideal for changing landscape of system refrigerants? That's easy, Steve. We've, uh, we've got it broken down here uh, on the slide. Uh, the first feature is the valve supported push rod design. Uh, this feature enables these valves to be used in high and low pressure applications. So uh, low temp uh, refrigeration, uh, medium temp refrigeration, all the way up into the, the higher pressure uh, air conditioning uh, charges that uh, are system refrigerants that we use. Second is the adjustability of the valve. This allows for dialing in the the desired superheat setting so you can install the bq valve and then you can dial in the system to get it to work at uh, the optimum performance third the bq valve comes in a few different body styles to accommodate most applications fourth we have the uh the selectable cartridge to change the proper valve sizing for the application we'll get into valve sizing here a little bit later but uh but yeah that's important uh, and the selectable cartridge uh, make sure you have the uh exact uh, combination that you need uh, and lastly, the th selectable thermostatic element charge. Uh, so the PT relationship between the bulb charge and the system refrigerant steep, that's how the uh, you get the response in the system that you need at the desired uh, temperature of the application. So let's dive into these features a little bit deeper. So what do we say when we, what do we mean when we say balance port? In the BQ design, it's a single push rod design which incorporates a tapered pin. The inlet pressure tending to open the uh, port is offset by the same inlet pressure acting against the push rod in the opposite direction. The port area is nearly identical to the area displaced by the push rod. This effect balances out any force from the high pressure liquid at the inlet of the valve. The balance feature means that the valve will control only using the three forces that we discussed earlier. Okay, so the inlet pressure doesn't have an effect on it. So now we're back to, to bulb pressure, equalizer pressure, and spring force, right, Steve? That is correct. Perfect. Okay, next we have the adjustable bottom cap feature on the BQ valve. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, removing the seal cap exposes the adjusting uh, adjustment mechanism. So to increase superheat, uh, you turn the drive clockwise in. This will increase the spring pressure, which we talked about before, resulting in the bulb needing to see higher temperatures, right? So the superheat grows in order to open the valve. Conversely, to decrease superheat, turn the drive counterclockwise. BQ valves have about eight and a half rotations of adjustment, and the valves are supplied with the adjustment mechanism set in the middle. Uh, so after installation, the contractor, you can adjust it in or out, uh, depending on whether you need the superheat uh, to go either direction. 
Also, an important note when you adjust a BQ valve uh, to tune your system or when you adjust any adjustable uh, expansion device, uh, you should let the system settle out for about 15 minutes before making another adjustment. Uh, allowing this amount of time to go by helps ensure that the system is running the way you want it before you leave the job site. So the first step in creating your BQ valve assembly is determining which valve configuration you are replacing. There are three versions of the BQ valve body. We name them differently to distinguish the differences between them. <clears throat> the, original, the original BQ valve was developed with SAE flare fittings. Um, flare fittings, flare valves can still be used on older legacy equipment that may need servicing. Um, the EBQ body has extended sweat connections and the SBQ body, which is, is convenient for applications where a replaceable strainer is being used on the inlet. And we do have internally and externally equalized versions of all these bodies. Yeah, that uh, that S, that strainer version, you see a lot of that in refri refrigeration applications. Yep. Right, supermarkets. Supermarkets, very good. Okay, all right, we'll move on to the sizing of the BQ valves, uh, as mentioned before. The select, uh, selectable BQ cartridge will determine uh, the capacity of the valve. Each, each cartridge has its own unique pin and port combination to provide various capacities. There are five cartridge sizes for the BQ series, the AAA through the C port. Uh, the AA through C, so the four largest sizes, uh, are available with 15% uh, bleed ports drilled in them upon request. Uh, the cartridges are identified by the painted hex portion, uh, as shown here. Uh, the table at the bottom right shows the capacity ranges for each of these cartridges with the corresponding system refrigerants. Finally, the last step in the process is determining which element to use for the application. The factors determining which element charge to use is simple. You just need to know which system refrigerant you are working with and what temperature range the application is, whether you are working on medium or low temp refrigeration application or air conditioning application. Sporlin offers the thermostatic charges you need, but wait, Brad. What is that picture on the right showing? Thanks for bringing that up, Steve. Uh, the photo on the right is the new and improved number 47 uh, element assembly. So what's so different about this element? Well, for starters, you'll notice that the button on the top is gone. We have removed the button and have gone to a geometry that allows for an induction braze joint. This, uh, this joint is more consistent uh, than in, uh, any manual brazing process. The second main change is the lock nut size. Instead of having uh, different lock nut sizes for the 43 and the 45, uh, basically refrigeration and air conditioning, uh, we're standardizing on one size uh, for, for all applications. This will make it easier for contractors and technicians uh, because now one size wrench can be used for all of the, the installation jobs. Uh, the number 47 element kits will be available in the next month. Uh, so be on the lookout for the new design. Uh, so that is it. Uh, after you've installed the element, uh, you've created a BQ valve, and you didn't realize it at the time, but uh, it was easy as uh, as one, two, three, Steve. That's right, Brad. <clears throat> That's, that three-step process can be found on our counter mats as shown here. Once you have your valve body, cartridge, and element assembled, you are ready to install your BQ valve assembly. After letting the system come back online and a possible adjustment to the valve later, your system will be back to running as efficiently as it was before. So how do you get your hands on these BQ valves, Brad? That's easy, Steve. Uh, Sporland authorized wholesalers offer valve bodies, cartridges, and element kits uh, individually. Uh, you can purchase them uh, separately, uh, or uh, we do have BQ cases uh, are also available, uh, like the one shown here on the left. The BQ case is an efficient way to keep extra components on hand or in a service vehicle. You don't want these things just bouncing around all over in the truck when you're driving to the- That sounds like a mess. Yeah, right? Um, so the new and approved case, uh, it's a little sturdier and it uh, it holds everything you want. Uh, this will make uh, emergency service calls a breeze as you can assemble with what you need right there on site. A single BQ case can cover 120 possible different combinations uh, of valves, products, and applications. Uh, you could also customize your case to the components that you use most often. So if you uh, start using stuff, you can replace uh, or, or fit it with more, uh, uh, you know, certain certain element charges, certain uh, size uh, uh, cartridges, uh, certain valve uh, body styles, whatever whatever you run into most often, you can start customizing your case. Uh, you can also uh, you make your own valve uh, at several wholesale locations using a Q bench. The Q bench has all of the bodies, cartridges, thermostatic elements at uh, at your disposal. Uh, the difference with the with the Q bench, uh, you know, you got uh, all your body variations uh, on on there, uh, your uh, cartridges, five different sizes, uh, and dozens of uh, thermostatic charges. Uh, a Q bench uh, can prepare over a thousand different configurations of TEVs, Steve. 
Uh, and that's uh, a lot of inventory reduction uh, for the for somebody at a wholesaler or in a truck. You know, you don't want to right. be carrying around a thousand TVs all over the place, but one uh, one BQ case and uh, and you're you're set and ready ready to go. So that makes the the BQ series a very powerful uh, tool for wholesalers and contractors. Having this flexibility with, will be a great asset to combat the ever changing landscape of the system refrigerant changes that uh, that we've been seeing and we will continue to see for the years to come. Sounds good. <clears throat> Before we take any questions, we would like to share with you our technical support contact information. Um, we have live phone support Monday through Friday, uh, 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central. We do take a few days off here and there, like the upcoming Christmas holidays. There you go. Everybody does that, right, yep, Steve? Yeah, hopefully. Um, and then our phone number is 636-392-3906. And we also have email support, SVD tech support at parker.com. Okay, I think that about wraps it up, Steve. So thank you all again for coming to the expert webinar series. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or feedback, you may contact us via the email uh, that Steve just uh, reported out there, svdtechsupport at parker.com. Uh, or you can always call 636-239-1111. This is the general number for our headquarters here in Washington, and then you'll be uh, transferred over to someone there. Okay, John, uh, let's, uh, let's transfer it back to you and see if there's any questions. Great, great, great today. Uh, a couple questions came in. Um, we have time for a few. A uh, question came in, is there a modular valve like BQ for larger evaporators, like the O and EBS sized valves? We do not have anything that large at this time. We do not. We do not. Yes, this is, uh, yeah, those uh, those will have to be ordered. Uh, and we do have them available at wholesalers, uh, John, but uh, but yeah, those would have to be ordered uh, as as completed parts. Okay. Uh, another question came in. How do you adjust the spring pressure? Is there a special tool designed for this? It is a square drive, Steve. So any quarter inch stem. Quarter inch stem. Uh, so any yeah. adjustable uh, wrench uh, will work. Uh, service tools also have the square drive on them. Uh, so anything like that, any uh, anything that will fix uh, or fit onto a, that uh, quarter inch uh, square head would would work. Okay. Uh, one last question. Why would a TEV fail? Oh, man. A lot of times it can be, I mean, there's a number of different factors. It can be debris in the valve if it gets uh, gummed up and the port gets clogged up. Um, sometimes, you know, elements get mistreated. They're out there. They're they're on a piece of equipment that's vibrating. Maybe maybe uh, they wear through on their copper cap tube and some of the some of the charge escapes. Uh, yep. Those are those are two of the more common reasons, I would think. Yeah. Steamy and applications. Uh, so those are those are two of the uh, probably the most uh most well seen things. So, uh, so whenever you're, whenever you're in the system and you're, uh, and you're cleaning stuff out, uh, you know, uh, always, you know, replace the catch all, uh, in there, install one. So that way you get the system cleaned out. Uh, so that way you don't have the same, uh, issue potentially on the next, uh, on the next expansion valve that you, that you install. So, yep. And if you can fit one of those valves in with the, uh, removable strainer on the inlet, that definitely helps catch some debris before it gets into the valve port as well. Okay. All right. Great. Well, that's all the questions we've had for now. If anybody has questions, you know, feel free to email uh, the tech support line. We'll follow up with those later. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody for joining us today on this webinar about the BQ valve system and components. We hope you found this information helpful. A big thanks to our presenters, Brad and Steve, for sharing their expertise with us. Be sure to keep an eye out on your inbox for follow-up emails that will be uh, including some reference materials about the items that we discussed today. Uh, we appreciate your participation. If you enjoyed this session, we'd love for you to join us on our next webinar where we'll be exploring CO2 systems and microthermal controls. Keep an eye out on social media channels for this announcement and registration details. This session was recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel where you can also check out other video shorts and training videos. And with that, we want to thank you and have a great day.